a result of great intense work of, sci of scientific institu institutes and design bureaus, the first artificial Earth satellite has been built. That was uh, released on October uh, 4th, uh, 1957. And it would be really hard to overstate the significance of the Soviet Union's uh, successful launch of that satellite, but particularly for Langley. We become a whole new agency and a whole new uh, bureau as a result. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, Silent Spring is published in 1962, launching a new environmental sensitivity. Rachel Carson in the book quotes from Robert Frost. She said, we now stand where two roads diverge, but unlike the roads in Robert Frost's familiar poem, they are not equally fair. The road we have long been traveling is deceptively easy, a smooth superhighway on which we progress with great speed, but at its end, lies a disaster. The other fork of the road, the one less traveled by, offers our last and our only chance to reach a destination that assures the preservation of the earth. This book, of course, ignites the environmental movement, and it reminds us of the importance of the public understanding of science and technology. Um, NASA's famous 19 uh, 68 Earthrise photo from Apollo 8 or the blue marble photo taken in 1972 by the Apollo 17 astronauts are also crucial in changing public awareness um, and would be the origins of today's atmospheric science program. The 60s are um, uh, important. Ultimately, I ask, what if? What if President Nixon had not cut the NASA budget following uh, the successful Apollo 11 missions in 69? What if the United States had not succumbed to a deeply unpopular war in Vietnam? John Logston suggests provocatively that Richard Nixon is the most consequential president for the American space program. Uh, and obviously, we will never know if we would have sent humans to Mars by now. But the Great Society programs, the war on cancer, as well as the Vietnam conflict, were costly. And having won the race to the moon, Nixon felt uh, he had some leeway to make some cuts. And my last uh, two slides are this. Um, a reminder that uh, genetics research uh, really transforms the science landscape. I was struck in uh, 2013 when I took uh, my first trip to Slovenia and I was the only North American in a room filled with people who were very aware of the Soviet uh, space program and its history and details. And all of a sudden I had this epiphany. For the Soviet Union, the existential question that their space program was aimed at uh, figuring out was, is there a God? It was religious. And for the United States, the existential question has been, is there life somewhere else in the universe? And um, this uh, is something that is really important to think about, uh, again, what animates a culture. But here on Earth, the sequencing of the human genome is one of the most consequential human achievements of all time, right up there with landing on the moon or the Voyager spacecraft uh, entering interstellar space. Um, its impact on NASA, though, is measurable. We compete with the genomics and genetics and biotech industries for resources. And lastly, I conclude with this with a picture of drones. Um, my colleague David Mindell wrote a great book on uh, robots called Our Robots Ourselves, and he, can, he uh, makes this final conclusion. He said, the essence of this book boils down to this. It is not manned versus unmanned that matters, but rather where are the people? Which people? What are they doing? And when? The last and most difficult questions then are, how does human experience change and why does it matter? And these are the questions that matter most as we reflect on Langley's centennial. How has human experience, how has history changed because of the work of this center and why does it matter? Thank you.